Visual effects is a super deep world. And if you're like many Resolve editors, you may be wondering, how the heck do I even start? I don't know anything about visual effects. How do I start making movie magic, changing things, doing things like you would do in Photoshop, but for moving video? Well, this is a really quick starter guide on that. I like to think of things as just kind of different elements of making good visual effects. And I'm talking visual effects that look real, they don't look janky, they don't look like somebody obviously put something in the video, it actually looks professional, right? There are more elements than these, but if you can get these right, things are going to be pretty good. And that is tracking, masking and mats, grain, color matching, color management, perspective and sharpness. And we're just gonna do a quick overview of these. Tracking, this is one of the most dead giveaway things in a shot. If you have a shot with a moving camera, like this right here, that's kind of on a handheld camera, anything that you add to the shot needs to have the exact same motion as the camera. So you fix that with a process called tracking. And essentially what that is, is picking little parts of the video that are nice and high contrast and letting the computer analyze all those little parts and how they move. So if they all move up or down, then it's going to capture that motion. And then you can apply that motion to whatever you want to add to the shot. For instance, if we want to add something like red eyes out this window, I can make a couple of red eyes here, but it's not going to look good once I play this back. They're gonna move around. But after I track the motion and apply the motion to these eyes, then it stays with the video. And by adjusting some other things, I can actually make this look realistic. So that's the first thing, is you need to nail tracking if you have a moving shot. If you have a shot that's locked down, not really a big issue. Next are masks and mats. This is essentially a way to put things behind stuff that's in the shot. So if I wanted to put something behind her head here, what I can do is draw a shape of her head and I can move these around and I can actually put them partially behind her head here. And because they're being hidden by that mask, it looks like it's actually going behind her in the real world. So that's masking. That is the process of kind of tracing things out so that you can put things in front of and behind other things. Next big thing would be sharpness. Depending on the type of effect that you're adding, it might need to be sharp or blurry. If I were going to add something maybe to the back window here, this could be relatively sharp because that's kind of closer to where the focus is. But if I wanted to do something like add a sticker to this door, that would have to be pretty blurry because everything around here is pretty blurry. You always have to think about how close something is to the camera and how sharp the lens is when you're talking about visual effects. So again, if we were gonna add these red eyes outside of the window, having them sharp like this just isn't realistic because everything in the background has this defocused bokeh. And so it would be really more realistic to do something like add a lens blur it's going to change the blurriness of these eyes. We could also take the blend down a little bit, just to kind of blend these down. And that's going to be a lot more realistic as long as we set our blur to be just right. We can blur these to match the background. So this shot, for instance, when we're adding some rain to the foreground, we don't want this rain to be really, really crisp like this. Because it's in the foreground, we want to add some blur. So I'll add a lens blur here and adjust my settings to be just right. And then we can blur these raindrops to be a little bit more realistic and also a little bit more subtle compared to having this really, really crisp look on these raindrops. Next big thing would be perspective. Let's say we're going to replace this phone screen with this map. We can't just scale this down and rotate this to put it on the screen. We actually have to adjust the perspective in 3D to match the perspective here using something like a tracked corner pin or a corner positioner like this to get that same perspective for replacing that screen. And this all kind of goes together, right? We need a mask on this that's going to cut these corners down the way that we want. And we also need to blur this a little bit so that it matches the blurriness of this footage. Because if it's too sharp, it's going to stick out. We can push up this blur size a little bit and then we get a much better looking result. And that brings us to color management and color matching. And these kind of go hand in hand. When you shoot with any modern high quality camera, you'll generally be shooting log, which tends to give you this kind of gray, washed out looking image. And that needs to be properly color managed. Now this shot is a little bit underexposed, 
but this image right here is a lot closer to how it actually looked when we shot it on that night. Color management is just a huge topic. If you do want help with that, there's a video right here on fusion color management, but suffice it to say that you do need to color manage if you want to make any kind of visual effects. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Because I have color management on in Resolve, the colors here don't look totally insane. Whereas if I were to go and turn off my color management in my timeline settings, then it's gonna look pretty crazy because we're gonna have this kind of gray washed out log footage that doesn't match at all with the screen. But once we have our color management on, then we're a lot closer to the ballpark of actually mixing these two elements together. That brings us to color matching. Color matching is taking the colors in one element and actually color correcting them to look realistic with the other element. So for instance, this screen, we might want to just take the gain down a little bit just so it's a little bit darker, Maybe take the saturation out a little bit so we don't have this perfectly bright screen. We have it a little bit darker so it kind of blends into the shot a little better. The last little element is probably also the most subtle, and that's grain. Depending on what you're doing to your shots, you may or may not need to deal with the amount of grain that's in the shot. And so if we zoom way, way in here and we play this back, we can see there's kind of this dancing grain. This is something where if I were to do a freeze frame on this, that I don't have that dancing grain anymore. And so anytime that you're adding a still on top of something or mixing like a PNG or a picture into something, it's a really good idea to match the grain between the element that you're adding and the footage you're adding it to. There are a lot of ways to do this. Generally, the workflow is to remove the grain from the shot using a plugin or a tool, put everything together without grain, and then put grain back on top of everything. That process, as well as integrating all the rest of those elements of VFX, we go over in detail in this video right here. This is a free course and you can download footage and follow along and we get real deep into making some realistic visual effects for our movie delivered and it's a good time. If you enjoyed this video and you want a little more, well, this is like the big brother, the big boy, <laughs> the big old boy. It's at least three absolute units bigger. And that's fact. <laughs>